God bless you, family. King Jesus. Bless you. Happy Saturday. I don't mean to be contentious. So I did a video yesterday talking about Israel and just kind of posing the question, could they have done something uh, different in their response to the slaughter in Israel in October? And uh, reading some comments, it's it's so challenging. Like I'm down to have conversation and um, and talk about talk about Israel and their response and who's right, who's wrong, or who's leaning more towards ideal response and who's leaning more towards perhaps fleshly response, who's looking at it more in, in physical flesh fallen eyes and who's looking at more with spiritual eyes what happened in israel was so atrocious and terrible um you know everyone can agree upon that every country has the right to defend itself where do we draw the line with defense um okay i don't want to get too sidetracked um but my concern especially with in the church believers is with professing believers who become maybe um, just too enamored with Israel over anything. Um, I pray for Israel, the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. I pray for converts, uh, people to be converted who are Jews everywhere. Every morning I pray that, seven days a week, for years. I don't stop, I pray that. I don't spend a lot of time in that prayer and be like, Israel is so, you know, I, I don't get gaga over a nation or a people group. Israel is fascinating because they came from old Abraham and Sarah and of the Lord and of his promise. Jews also tend to be very brilliant and intelligent and a Messiah came from them. So when I see Jewish people, I always kind of smile. I'm like, cool. I wonder if Jesus looked like that one or this one, if he had a darker skin or lighter. Um... <clears throat> So uh, there's no, I don't, um, I don't know. In some of the comments, I get the perception like people are so angry that I, I'm just trying to exalt Jesus over Israel. I don't want to steal glory from Jesus and be like, oh, Israel, Israel. <laughs> I mean, God have mercy on Israel. The, the, the tribulation is made for Israel. Um, they're going to go through it. I mean, I don't sit there and like applaud Israel. I'm like, oh my gosh, guys, please come to Jesus soon. Otherwise, you're going through it. You're going to see Antichrist and think he's Messiah. And you'll get it at the three and a half year point of tribulation. So, why would I be Gaga all over Israel? They, they need to be converted. The Apostle Paul writes about um, that blindness that has come in part until the fullness of the Gentiles. They're blind. They're in unbelief. How can I put Israel flags everywhere and make I stand with Israel? I pray for Israel. I take a humble posture with Israel. Because I'm, I'm, I tremble a little bit at what's coming to Israel, okay? So, just wanted to say uh, that. And, yeah, I mean, I'll continue to have communications with people in the comments and, and anywhere, everywhere. <laughs> uh, we should not steal any glory from Jesus. We should not exalt uh, a people group, a nation. Even the nation whom the Messiah came from. Remember Messiah before his sacrifice. He looked at Jerusalem. He said, he lamented, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill uh, the prophets. What does he say? You kill the prophets and you stone the, um, you know, they were in rebellion. He's like, how I long for you to, to gather you like a hen does her chickens, but you were not willing. Therefore, you are left desolate. But people are like, I stand with Israel. I stand with Israel. We pray for Israel. God have mercy on Israel. I don't stand with an, uh, in Israel in unbelief. <clears throat> Israel, by and large, um, I support. Um, yeah, I support. I don't. I don't want them to be annihilated, and they they won't be. But I, I can't wholesale say I support everything they're about. <clears throat> That's the bottom line. And, and I and I caution anyone who really exalts uh, Israel. Like, let's not steal glory. The first commandment is don't worship anything but God. <clears throat> not even whom He came from, whom the Lord ordained Messiah to come from. Um, and out of nothing good of themselves, Israel, it's because of the Lord's promise. They are still flesh. You know what I mean? Just be careful. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very protective of my Jesus. He saved my life eight years ago. 
And uh, like I said, Israel's amazing and fascinating. And I don't even know many Jewish people, but if I did, it'd be fascinating. I'd be like, wow, how cool. You got some kind of special, like, in you because of how the Lord made you. You know, but still, if you're fallen, the fallen Jew shall still go to hell and burn forever. So shall every people group and nation, right? So God have mercy and compassion on Jews. I pray for it every day. You know, that's bottom line with me. Um, I'm certainly not going to exalt them. I think that's dangerous. Um, so when we say we stand with Israel, I think that's a conversation. What do you mean by that? And that's all I want to flesh out is like, what does that mean? Um, and yeah, it's not a simple thing because, uh, you know, Israel is on is in unbelief, right? You know, you guys are hearing what I'm saying. But anyways, I just wanted to, to touch on that. Okay. So, <laughs> I see an article today from like 30 minutes ago saying, all right, saying Hamas is talking about peace negotiations. They sent like a, a delegation or something to Cairo, Egypt. There's a CIA head who's there as well. They're talking about a ceasefire um, in exchange for like a truce with Israel. Well, we can't trust these guys. They're terrorists. They're liars. Um, that's their that's their mo. That's how they operate. So it does make me think of First Thessalonians five three. For when they shall say peace and safety, we've talked about this. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Okay, they're 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 talking about it, right? About the peace and safety. And if they get something that's short-lived, because it's not going to be long, we know when Antichrist comes, it's going to be that seven-year deal that he breaks in the middle, but could there be a little <clears throat> one before? I think so. Where there's a temporary, okay, they'll say, sure. You know, they're going to break it probably in a day or two, but when they say peace and safety, bam, sudden destruction, catching away, Project Blue Beam, alien deception. <laughs> that's what I think. That's what happened to uh, the, the, the church, the believers, they'll say, aliens. Okay, so as I saw that headline, I just thought, wow, wow, look at this. Biblical times when they say peace and safety. Very, very interesting. All right, I wanted to comment on that. Book of Nahum is very interesting. I was reading Nahum today, and this is fascinating. He was a prophet about 100 years or so after Jonah. Uh, and we all know the story of Jonah. We all had the solar eclipse um, going over uh, several cities called Nineveh people thinking, wow, you know, what's up, what's coming, and uh, myself included, and I think those those were signs, and, and now we're in a time period after that, the sign, the time to what, repent, yes, for some, <clears throat> okay, and Nineveh did repent, and the Lord had mercy on them, but a hundred years later, Nahum um, was preaching, and, uh, you know, because of, because of pride and idolatry and backsliding, uh, the people of Nineveh eventually did get uh, destroyed, right? I wanted to read a little bit. Um, just at the start of Nahum, there's some uh, historical information. Okay, Nineveh had been given the privilege of knowing one true God under Jonah's preaching. The city had repented. God stayed his judgment. A hundred years later, Nahum proclaims the downfall of the same city. The Assyrians have forgotten their revival and have returned to their habits of violence, idolatry, and arrogance. As a result, Babylon will so destroy the city and no trace of it will remain. A prophecy fulfilled in painful detail. <clears throat> the destruction of the capital city of Assyria is a message of comfort and consolation to Judah and all who live in fear of the cruelty of the Assyrians. Okay. So this is interesting, right? So anyways, that, that caught me. I, I didn't understand the history of Nahum in conjunction with... Um, with Jonah and with Nineveh. So, you know, we had that great sign of the eclipse over uh, Nineveh's in America. Uh, will America repent? <clears throat> no, I don't think we have. But even if America had repented, you know, we know the trajectory. We know America and the West will fall. There will be a one world system. Antichrist will be at the helm. So that was fascinating. Um, Repentance is key and huge, but it's like it's a daily thing we need, right? And the backsliding, the, the sin that is embedded in man and in the nations. Uh, and the Messiah is so necessary, right? Even the, the nation repented, but it still came for them. The judgment still came. It, you know, it, it can never just be maintained without Christ Jesus. And the good news is <clears throat> that uh, 
even when you're doing great, praise the Lord, he gives you grace. And then when you struggle and you fall, it's like, still praise the Lord because Christ Jesus is magnificent. Like the noonday sun, he's so necessary. When we screw up, like the Apostle Paul says, I don't do the things I want to do. I do the things I don't want to do. Wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? Praise be to God for Christ Jesus. So even when we, when we maybe slip up and screw up and we're like, I don't even like doing this. I hate this flesh. I hate this sin. I hate the world. I hate the devil. And I hate the satanic world system. And I love you, Jesus. And you know this. Yet I've fallen. Uh, Jesus is magnificent. We can cling to him. We can repent. Uh, First John talks about if we confess our sins when we sin, Christ Jesus is right and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So guys, if you ever slip into sin, repent. Seek the Lord. Humble yourself. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all righteousness. In Jesus' name, the name that has power. Um, That's... Uh, so we're covered either way. When we're striving good, we praise the Lord. When we, we struggle and uh, we realize, dang, even though I love you, Lord, I can fall. We say, praise the Lord. I need you more, Jesus. I'm going to read scripture more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to fellowship more. I'm going to bless the brethren more. I'm going to integrate fasting. I'm going to do these things that these biblical principles teach us that we can do. I also wanted to end with uh, this Cody Carnes song called Christ Be Magnified. It's so good. I just wanted to share that. I was listening to it on repeat today when I was at the gym this morning. And um, man, it's just like this crescendo towards the end of it where it's talking about when Christ returns in glory with all the angels and the saints. You know, I'll still be praising um, Christ Be Magnified like it'll never change. We, we, we pray that now, Christ Be Magnified. And when we are in glory, when we are at the second coming, looking at the back of Christ's head coming to rule and reign, we still are going to be saying, Christ be magnified. <clears throat> and uh, in conjunction with that great song, listen to it if you get a chance, or you probably heard it, but play it again, it'll bolster you. Um, it just makes me think how wonderful it will be to see all of you, all believers, glorified perfect. Ah. Uh, That day and moment is coming soon. And, that's, and that's, that's my final thought. My sense is like that that moment is soon. That trumpet blast. I feel some days, even right now, that it could happen in like two seconds. And uh, boom, I'm gone. And you're gone. So, how awesome. Um, it's very humbling, too, that the Lord would save us. So... Guys, be blessed today and know that the Lord loves you so much and his promises are forever and we go home soon. I'll see you next time. God bless you.